winning trophies. I'm in experiencing a lot of those things. Three nil. Can you believe it? Almost lost the cup and you win it. The new European champions, the treble, the dream come true for you. Oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Football, by the hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome to American Red Devils Podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Oh, sir, how you doing? How you doing? What a throwback. Uh, I can't believe it was only three years ago that we were playing in Stockholm for the Europa League final. But what a fun match to rewind to during this COVID shutdown. How you doing? How did you enjoy that match? And how's your Memorial Day weekend going thus far? Uh, weekend going well. Weather is great out here in the barrier. Summer has finally hit us, although uh, lots of people are still inside. Amazing match. Watching Manchester United lift trophies never gets old. So it reminds you why Manchester United is such a great club in the first place. It's what it's all about, baby. It's all about winning title titles, hopefully Champions League trophies. Uh, and then Europe is like a second tier trophy, but I'll take it because it's the last thing we've won. It makes three years. It's been three years since United won a piece of silverware. Um, it doesn't feel that long ago, but in some ways it feels even longer because it's been seven years since we won the big thing. Which is the uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the one you really, really care about winning. Well, your bread is buttered, I would say, is uh, the English Premier League. Uh, as a Manchester United fan, you're up only three times. So, you know, we're not quite a European titan, but we did complete uh, sort of winning all the European trophies with the Europa, Europa Cup. Uh, amazingly, Pogba, huge in finals. I mean, like we talked, we had that Pogba conversation last week about him, what motivates him. Clearly, trophies do, because when he, he's in the final, he plays lights out. He so certainly played lights out in this final. Um, what a game it was, right? Jose's first game. And how many players in this starting 11 are just, they're gone now. Three, only three years later, and that team has really turned over almost entirely, uh, bar the four players that started uh, who are still around. But it was a very Jose match, right? Just like all defense, get your chances where you get them, out physical the other team. Um, but a pretty strong performance overall. They really—I I don't remember us like just being that dominant in this game, but it really was. They shut down Ajax the whole, whole way. Yeah, going into it, Ajax had like the full hype train. You know, young squad coming on up, the lit at the back. I mean, obviously the young in the midfield. I mean, so many great players in that team have gone on to other top European clubs. But you know, the hype was on their side. United, Mourinho, negative tactics. You know, but. It was kind of funny. I, I tweeted out. I was live tweeting the match, as I usually do. And then it was like possession 66 to Ajax, you know, uh, <laughs> basically 34% to Manchester United. And you're like a classic Mourinho masterclass, tough to watch, but he wins, right? I mean, now that's Mourinho in a nutshell. You sell your soul to the devil. He plays a little negative. Like you said, a little sloppy. It wasn't great, but at the end of the day, you're lifting silverware, and that is what matters. It is the most typical Mourinho game, and probably the most typical Mourinho win in some ways, uh, other than maybe like that Juventus win, which is just, remember that win in, in Turin? That was really uh, felt typical Mourinho. But this one, the team he went with, right? Bench and Martial. <laughs> that was like a total move that Mourinho would do because. Uh, it wasn't the way he expected to play in that match. You know, Mickey offered a little bit more defensively. Trademark. Every way. They got the win. It wasn't always pretty. wasn't uh, the prettiest attacking football, but defensively, they were very solid. Held it down well. Uh, midfield, everyone playing a part. Darmian with a terrific game. Standout first half. Um, so just a dominating game for them. Good piece of silverware. And probably the peak for, for Mourinho at Old Trafford and at United, right? Like the best best feelings we ever had. Next season, you know, we got second, uh, lost in the FA Cup final to Chelsea. Didn't end as well. No, not at all. And, you know, it's funny when you look at that Ajax team and you see Daly Blinn playing center back for Manchester United, and you would have said, okay, we sold him. He went back to Ajax. And uh, you would have said, who would have, who, would have, who would have made a deep run in the Champions League after he left the club? Would it be Manchester United or Ajax? And Ajax actually turns out to be the ones – who, who, are, who went on to make the deep runs in the Champions League. So I would say that's a surprise, right? After this Euro Cup, Euro, Europa Cup final, you say, okay, these are two promising clubs coming up. Which one's really going to crack into the uh, top European competition? And Manchester United just that we hadn't in the last three years, and we're not even in it. Well, if you look from 2017 to 19, I think is when they made the final, um, they were a better managed club. 
right? They they arguably had better young players in many regards. Dude, they had Dijon came off the bench in like the 85th minute and looked great. He didn't even play. Uh, Van de Beek also came off as a sub. So like a lot of their, I mean, they have so many good players in this team. They had Sanchez, they went to to uh, Spurs. They had DeLitt, who obviously went to Juventus. Um, and they just kept pushing. They had Zayac, who's going to Chelsea in the summer. So they made the better steps probably in, in the years after this game. We, I don't know, we never really coalesced around a vision or an idea. And United probably didn't get to these same highs in the following seasons. Um, so ever since then, not not so much. Hey, if you're if you're if you're in the market to buy some players, Ajax is not a bad club to buy them from. Erickson, right? Suarez, Lozano, you know, Blind, right? You, the list goes on. Delit, Dijon. I mean, it's like we should just be buying up Ajax's players. We got Vandersar, special agent over there. It's a great club, great stadium. I've been to a match there. I saw Erickson play. I want to say probably like you know eight or nine years ago uh, in Amsterdam. Great stadium, great club. We should be buying more Ajax players. <laughs> you, should, you, should have, you should have bought <laughs> you know? more Ajax players after the season. There were so many good talents, yeah. like three or four players that you could easily take. A center back, a midfield, a couple of midfielders at least. Um, so I, I don't know. Jose should have been more eyes open. Maybe he didn't rate the Dutch, the Dutch lads. We obviously went for Lukaku they, they, the following they summer. They play a different style of football, and that's a great point. To like kind of bring it full circle is you have sort of the new school a football possession based. It probably came out of uh, Ajax in the first place, but you know, Cruyff, the Dutch masters, uh, you know, possession based game. That's what they were playing. That's kind of what City's playing. Mourinho's the old guard, you know, his tactics, they had their run in Italy, obviously famously with Inter Milan. And uh, you're probably seeing the changing of the guard, but Oze, uh, but Jose can still, still pip him, right? He might not be able to win as consistently as he could with those tactics in the past, but he's able to pip these possession based clubs especially Ajax here, you know, I would say Manchester United, you look at our payroll, you look at the players we have, we should be winning the game anyway, tactics aside, but it is kind of the changing of the guard. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, but it also, you know, experience prevailed. This is a, that was a super young team uh, and United certainly wasn't, there was some experience uh, in that side with Fellaini, um, Romero, dude, I like Romero in the final, right? He had earned it, got us all the way there and he gets the opportunity to play in a final for Manchester United, which is super exciting. Good game, good, good, good. Uh, way to way to pull it back three years, and how much has changed sentiment wise? You know the ups and downs of Mourinho, the ups and downs of the Ole, and now we here we are in the summer of 2020, waiting for football to come back and finish the season, which is like <laughs> never thought I'd say those words. And it's really funny. I mean, with this episode 206 of the podcast, sir, we decided to start the podcast watching this game on your couch in Oakland. Uh, if you can remember, that's how far we have come. I mean. You know, a lot uh, personally, both Mary and now we have kids as well. But, you know, just we thought we were, Jose was going to be the man, the man for the next like five or six years. Thought he could stay, thought he could be the next to Alex, go on to win a lot of things. I mean, the poor man's trouble, right? Community Shield, Europa Cup, <laughs> EFL. <laughs> that is like the poor man's trouble for sure. No yeah, I don't know about three, maybe two. Um, no, but you know what I'm saying? Those are the three. If you were to say, I win the, I, <laughs> I the, I the I treble. I the Community Shield. <laughs> the League Cup instead of the FA Cup. Yeah, League basically. Like, and then Europa Cup. It's like FA Cup, that's like uh, that's a little too high. So the poor man's treble for sure, I would say. I agree with that. Uh, I definitely agree with that. Um, but I mean, I think our hearts wanted Mourinho to be around five, six years. Our, our minds were like, this is going to blow up. This is always what happens. First year, he comes to a club. <laughs> out of the gates hot and then things just start souring because he's even in this game man, he looked like kind of a troll i i didn't you know it was happy jose he was all pumped up which was fun to see at the end right his son jumped on him and he was he was super excited and he was you know he got a lot a lot of stick you know just being at united uh we in general get a lot of heat from the press and then you add the jose factor and that's like a uh, recipe for for trouble and it meant a lot to him, but at the same time, you could like you still saw that edge, <laughs> that edge that was quintessential Jose. That like for better or for worse, it was sometimes it was good for him, but certain players, right? It, it didn't always work out. You could saw him and Pogba embracing at the end of the game. That was peak of their relationship. So it, it soured so quickly. Uh, uh, it's, it's tough, sir. But hey, let's get into the quick PSA for the podcast we do at the beginning of the show. Uh, we are independent fan content. No one else is doing anything other than me and Alex edited, run the blog, sir. You're doing a great job at AmericanRedDevils.com. Amazing fan generated content there. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Right now, we are doing a giveaway of the American Red Devils hoodie. It has our big badge logo on the front. All you got to do is drop a review on iTunes. Uh, click on five stars if you don't mind, and you will be entered automatically 
to win an American Red Devils badge logo hoodie. Still undefeated, sir. Hoodie looks great. You're wearing it right now. How are we feeling? Feeling great, sir. I mean, it's a little warm <laughs> in the bunker to be wearing this hoodie, but, uh, you know, pod never sleeps. That's what it's all about. We got another order in last night for a hoodie, and we appreciate everyone who's been continuing to support the pod. These tough times, you know, it's tough for a lot of people, uh, a lot of heartache around the U.S., around the world. So we, our heart goes out to all of our fans. Everybody's listening uh, and has been affected directly or indirectly by what's going on. So stay safe out there. We try to, you know, provide a little bit of a distraction as much as we can. Not as many commuters these days as there used to be. So, <laughs> you know, pods <laughs> treated in a different light. But we appreciate everybody who's, who's hanging out, and we can't wait for football to be back, sir. Because we're getting players came back to training. They're at Carrington. We saw some smiling faces. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I'll tell I'll tell you what, sir. We're we're not doing the pod for the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, the car I drive around is not as nice as the car as they drive into Carrington. I'll tell you that. Yeah, no, the the pot is done just for the sheer love of the game, and that's the way it's going to stay no matter what, sir. No matter how big we get, always got to stay humble. We're United fans through and through. We've been traveling this, traveling watch this team for a long time, and it's just about the fan experience and having independent fan content. So if you like us, drop a review. Uh, shout out on Twitter. We love the banter. Keep it coming. And again, stay safe out there. Let's jump into our world famous COVID-19 English Premier League update, sir. I Everybody's favorite. It Everybody's is, favorite. Let's hear, what's the latest? It is so confusing what's going on. <laughs> it I is. Of time I have to spend reading different articles to figure out, like cobble together uh, exactly what is going on and what can happen this week. Like we always say, this is a huge week for English Premier League <laughs> Every <soccer>. week. <laughs> it's literally you said that every week. But no, but it dials up. Every it's true. week it kind of like it's ratchets true. up. <laughs> and so... We went into testing, right? We talked about training. Flads are back. First round of testing was the 17th, 18th of May. Six players and staff from three different clubs were found to have COVID-19 from 748 tests. Again, there's a lot of confidentiality around here. Um, as far as if it's staff, if it's players, who knows? We do know that some players are quarantining at Wofford. So like one player or staff had to be affected there out of the first round. Second round of testing was conducted through the 19th, 22nd, it was released yesterday. Two tests out of 996. So you're starting to see, okay. That's not bad. We had six, we had six positives. They're in lockdown. Anyone in contact with them, they're in lockdown. Now of the 996, we only have two. So what does that set up, sir? That sets up big club meeting this Wednesday, right? And this would be the vote to move to stage two protocols, which would essentially be full contact training, sir. Woo! How are you feeling about how are you feeling stage two? How are you feeling about stage two? I mean, I, I think that is real progress, right? To go from six out of seven fifty to two out of almost a thousand. That's definitely headed in the right direction. Um, and as long as they're going to continue to do these these tests, what twice a week? It seems to be the cadence they're they're establishing. Um, I think we're headed in the right direction. And full contact is what you need, right? There's no way you can actually play football unless the players are actually training like they're used to training. So. Um, you were not, you were not hyperbolizing, sir. It actually is a very big week. This is a very no, big week, big, but here, but here's the deal. So a Bournemouth player has tested positive that was released by Bournemouth's club. So who knows how many players he's come into contact? Who knows how many more need to go in isolation? So it's kind of like, that's why you keep testing, right? Man down. That's why you keep testing. And that's why they have to yeah. do, they have to do that many tests is because like what you just said, because they can be in contact. They might not show up right away. They might show up three days later. That's why you just keep doing it. And that's why, I mean, credit to the English Premier League. They've been doing non-contract training while they're testing everyone. Then they're figuring out who's positive. So in theory, if it was a Bournemouth player, like he tested positive, no one else should have uh, essentially gotten gotten it because of him. If, every, if all the rules were followed, right? So the big meeting between the clubs is Wednesday, and that's going to be the vote. So apparently manager and players, this is kind of where they're not 100%, right? So... Last stage, to move to stage one protocols, the clubs voted unanimously, and that is a big kind of sign. So on this vote, hopefully we'll see a unanimous vote. If, if clubs are, if like Bournemouth says, hey, this is scary, we had a positive test, they vote against it, then you're going to see chinks in the armor as far as if there's a disagreement on getting to stage two, then how are you get to the playing matches, right? So this is a big step, and uh, Wednesday – whatever the vote goes, that will kind of give us a big signal as far as if football is going to be coming back soon. And, uh, sir, a famous quote from Tom cleverly here. He came out in the press. Obviously he 
is at Watford. There are players quarantining. And he said, phase one, in a nutshell, is as safe as going to the supermarket. But in phase two, in training, you could be rubbing shoulders with 15, 20 guys on the same day. So if we get into phase two and there's a sudden spike in positive cases, that puts the whole thing in jeopardy, which I, I do agree, right? So I think with all the information in hand, we're most likely to see a unanimous vote Wednesday, move to stage two, and then as they continue to test, it's sort of, what do the numbers say? Yeah, I, I would agree. But I think you're right. The risk factor goes up. That's actually a really smart quote. Phase one is like going is as safe as going to the supermarket. Yeah. Um, two, level, you know, increases the risk for sure. But at the same time, if you're continuing to do testing, you should be able to isolate and track anyone who tests positive, get them away from the players, have them quarantine for a couple of weeks, test them again, uh, and carry on. But that's like, if it's locked down, as long as the players aren't going out partying and exposing themselves too much uh, and are taking every precaution, seems like they have the resources to do it. And they're, they have plenty of tests. And as long as they keep testing, it should be, you know, it should in theory work. Uh, let's say, let's hope. In theory. Uh, in theory, Conte, obviously. This is big news, uh, right? Big, obviously big news. Chelsea midfielder. Um, he has pre-existing uh, heart condition. I think his brother passed away as well. Uh, so he, for clear reasons, is sitting out completely. He's basically like, I'm good. I don't want to play. And I think that's the right, that's the right move. He, he, he can decide if he wants to play or not, if it's safe. Uh, Troy Deeney, again, uh, sitting out as well. Like he's, not going to not going to be playing. So that's going to be big. where everyone comes out here. Right? That's going to be big, right? Individual players starting to decide if they're not going to take part in the end of the season, especially big players for both those teams, right? Conte and Dini are both, you know, massive for Chelsea and Watford respectively. So um, that could have a huge impact on who finishes in the top four, couldn't it? Right, Conte not being at Chelsea. I'm, looking, I hate to say I'm it, being a United fan, Chelsea, I love the sound of that. Three points. Yeah, are you I'm kidding me? At Chelsea on fifty three right now. And I know 48 points and we have 45 and if N'Golo Conte ain't playing midfield for Chelsea, that is sure going to impact the finish this season. For sure. Uh, as will City's appeal <laughs> on the Ooh, Champions League. That's coming up when? In June? Yes. So uh, that, And the timing of that's really interesting because we clearly, I'm not even going to entertain five getting in Champions League. That's just my personal rule. It's four or bust. I'm treating it as four. We'll know by the start of the season. I'm right? not doing this five thing because they're gonna. They have city has money. They have good lawyers. Sir. I know, but in theory, we should know by the time they restart the season, right? Like, because they're ruling. I think the 12th of June and the earliest comeback is likely the 18th of June for Premier League. Um, so we should know for the last what nine? Ga- there are nine games left in the league. Yep. Whew, it's gonna be big because if if they decide then it's it's basically dusted. Right? No, no, you have to know going it like you can't celebrate fifth if it's like the ruling was like two weeks after Pending, right so if it's no, decided no. before then yeah i'll celebrate it. i mean but again let's not focus on getting fifth let's we should try to get third we should push for third third you know i mean this is this is what we should be focused on as Manchester united but sir should we jump into the uh match breakdown actually before we jump into the match breakdown one more covid bullet point here there is a second meeting thursday that will discuss the return to competitive action around the schedule as well as issues around using home grounds and broadcasting. Cause again, with broadcasting, you got to add people, you got to add tests, you got to tons of logistics. So second club meeting Thursday, not as critical. It's really getting that phase two. And then this is kind of one domino that will fall after that. It's going to be a update done. big week, big week, as you said, big week, sir. Well, let's jump in Europa league final. I versus Manchester United, two great teams there. May 24, 2017, Friends Arena in Stockholm, sir. Why didn't we go to this match? I was, I was thinking Stockholm. We've been there before. Great city. <sighs> Stockholm's a great city, especially in May. You know, like when those days getting longer. Um, it's actually today. So we picked a great game because it was actually three years ago to the day. Um, simpler times, pre-COVID. You could just go to a football match. I'm sure they had lots of good beers at, at that arena. It looked like a good time and a big win. This was a big, big win for us. A uh, nice piece of silverware to pick up. Something that we hadn't actually won um, going into this match. So good for Jose. He, Jose peaked. This is this is peak Jose, and then it was all rocky road from there. Yeah, yeah. And now he's at Spurs, <laughs> so I don't know how I ended up uh, going to the starting lineup. We had Sergio Romero, the best number two in net. Uh, Darmy and left back, Blinn center back, Smalling center back, Valencia right back. That back line gone. Herrera playing CDM, Pogba, Fellaini in a two, Mata on the right, Mkhitaryan on the left, Rashford number nine through the middle. Clearly, Jose had some defensive uh, 
he had defense in mind in this game, not trying to play possession, not so, t- trying to hit them on the attack. It's more of a counterattack punch from Jose. Very Jose uh, starting 11, especially for a final. Um, I remember be, when we watched this game in the, in the build up to it, being very surprised that Martial was left out for Mkhitaryan, but Mkhitaryan was on form. He had a very good Europa League run up to this game. Um, and obviously, the, there was a bit of a contentious relationship between uh, Jose Mourinho and Martial. So that probably contributed to it as well. Four, only four of these players from the starting 11 are still around at United. And it's only been three years, which is kind of incredible. Um, and obviously, this was Rooney's, if I if I'm remember correctly, last match for Manchester United. Yes, it was. Uh, as, yeah, so big game. Big game and quite a turnover there's been. But this is such a Jose team. <laughs> you know, it was such a Jose team. It was big. Um, and it did the job. So of these, uh, of the players who have left, other than Michael Carrick on the bench, who would you, who would you want back in Manchester United? Assuming that you're like, okay, all uh, these players left, who do you want back? I would have kept Blind. Um, Herrera would have been hard to keep because he got 50 million and I probably wouldn't have paid that five year deal. I, I probably like you can't money. No question. The money. No question. I would have still liked to have Herrera and probably Fellaini. Cause like, I hate to say it. Sometimes you just need a big Fellaini. Honestly, like, plan B, bro. I, He's like a great plan I, B. I like I you know it. Fellaini came in, worst signing. I hated Fellaini. Absolutely knew exactly what it would be, but then you have to yeah, English Premier League game is physical. Yep. Imagine Van Dyke going against Fellaini. Cool. You know, you're going to play away Anfield like get Fellaini up there, bully Van Dyke. Like you need the, you need that physical presence cuz it's like a card you got to play, you know, and Clearly, Pep Guardiola over at Manchester City, he just plays tiny tots all day. But, you know, having that big physical presence, it can help you. It goes, it goes a long way in English. Cold, rainy day. Away Dude, especially Stoke, certain, so exactly, especially certain teams. Maybe not when you're playing Manchester City, uh, but when you are playing a Stoke away or a Bournemouth or a Burnley, you know, a team that's like pretty strong, pretty physical. And, dude, he's a, he's a handful to play. Right, he could have had two goals. Exactly, in this you game. see that old English, like just physical elbows, baby, all pretty, elbows. With, yeah, <laughs> with players. I mean, he's a very divisive player. Among, and I think now people have kind of it's turned towards the positive because they kind of remember he he had a hand in every um, piece of silverware we won since Fergie left in the run up to those those finals because he scored a lot of big goals. They weren't always pretty, but they were big, and there were a lot of late goals as well. But if you were going to say, what player do we need after he left, it would be Andrew Herrera because last year at midfield, we were dying in the midfield, right? So if, if we had Herrera and we didn't get rid of him, he would have bailed us out a lot, right? I and, have to, yeah. Totally. You know, at least early this, I mean, I say last year, but it's really early this season when, you know, we had to play Pereira in the midfield. Having Herrera would have been huge. Or Daly Blind, you know, Daly Blind. He's not the fastest defender, but he's a smart defender and he's effective. You can play him kind of all over the pitch, play him at left back, play him at a, you know, a CDM position. Um, he would have been a, probably a good player to keep hold of. He's, he went to a you know, Champions League final. It's amazing that there's that much rotation in the squad. It's like it's scary from just like a do they know what they're doing perspective? No, like they no don't. Director they don't. Of football. <laughs> they like don't. No team should have turned over like this. No, three years, bro. No way. It's unbelievable. Hey, I blame Edward Woods hashtag sack. Woodward, you can get the sticker. Uh, where do we get to the, the, where do we get to the financials in the, in the news? Oh, that's a dumpster fire. Okay, uh, sir, you want to jump in this match? Absolutely. Um, so, start of the match, it's typically United willing to sit back, absorb pressure from the jump. Very much Jose. Um, so, no real surprises there. Uh, tenth made a good chance for Flaney from ball from Mata, showing his danger in the box right away. Um, but unfortunately, it was right at the IX keeper. And then five minutes later, good chance from Ajax in front of net. Uh, probably one of their best opportunities of the game, but it actually it falls. Was it a cross from Traore, right? Traore was getting forward. He was like causing a stroke. The poor man's Traore. We're not talking about Adama. Play, no. play for Wolves. Talk about the former Chelsea player, Traore. Um, yeah, he looked a little dangerous at first, and then I think they started doubling him, and he slowed down. And speaking of not slowing down, whew. Paul Pogba had a hell of a game, and in the 18th minute. Delaney, Pogba, edge of the box. Can he go for goal? He does. It takes a deflection. Manchester United have opened the scoring, and it's a record signing who does it. I think we call that a members bouncer. Uh, ridiculous deflection. <laughs> I mean, it's got, I don't say it's a speculative shot, but he takes a low driven shot, uh, and it hits the defender's foot, bounces up over, over the goalie. 
I'll take it. You celebrate it like, a, like it's a banger. I, I'll tell you what, Pogba had a go early on as well. And when Pogba's having goes, you know, things happen. I mean, he's a threat outside the box. He's getting forward. That's what you want to see. Put in a shift. I mean, Paul P, like record signing, hoist the trophy. Mourinho, obviously, we don't say he's at the wheel, sir. We <laughs> say, you know, woke up this morning feeling fine. You got it. You know? We used to feel fine. <laughs> now we're at the wheel. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, dude, I, after this game, we were like, we got to start the United podcast. Team's going to go on. They're going to win. That, that Part of the reason why we started the pod was because of the momentum that we felt after Paul P. record signing coming in. It's funny. Time. It's been such I a mean, shit show. It's been such a shit show. <laughs> Those three years have been like <laughs> Sorry, such a roller coaster ride up and down, which actually probably made it a more exciting time to do it. Because if it was just like yeah. off to the races, you know. You're not challenged as much if you're winning all the time. Now it's, it's we've, had, like to, we've had, sto- like had storylines. We've had storylines. So yeah, like to maybe this. I'd like maybe to next year for the title and not worry about top four. I'll uh, tell you. I would what. agree. I would agree. <laughs> well, that that hasn't happened in the last three years. So hopefully, we put together a good end of the season. We have a good transfer window, which is going to be muted um, with valuations. But if we could put together cobble together some some good buys, we could go on uh, and we keep Paul Pogba. You never know. Absolutely, sir. I totally agree. <laughs> All right. 24th minute. Uh, nice strike from, from Valencia, but it's right at the keeper as well. Uh, it was actually good play from Fellaini. Switch it from one side to the other and find found the uh, the wide open Valencia who I surged mean, into the box. This chance, this chance just sums up Valencia in that shot for me, at least. You know, captain of the team comes in ripping. This should be a goal. I mean, this should be a goal. Like if you rewatch this opportunity, Totally t- should be top right. He has a keeper beat. Perfect opportunity. Valencia's head down, shoots a right. That's I, mean, I, mean, I love Valencia, uh, but all power, no placement. So at least. exactly <laughs> that. Yeah, that, that's better, better said than uh, <laughs> you said it better than I could. <laughs> anyway, that was the half. Basically, it wasn't that much doing for the rest of the first half. John, what would you have said? To the players going in, uh, what do you think? Of Yo- uh, yeah, what do you think, Jose? What do you think, Jose was saying <laughs> to the players at halftime? Look, I mean, the commenter said it. It's like you know, I'd have one goal, but can they, you know, can they lock it down? And I would, and I was surprised how well we locked it down in the second half. So I mean, not clearly, I think you know what you have to say. We're going to play the same way. We're going to be defensive, be tough, try to get the second goal. You know, and. Uh, Manchester United, this was like one of the better performances and, and such a big game. I, I even remember being surprised by how well we played. We really stepped up to the occasion here, uh, opposite of the EFL final and opposite of, you know, how we've kind of gone in top four runs as of late, but steely performance for United in the second half here. No, it's a really good point. Um, we'll hop into it in a second, but it was one of the best performances probably for Jose's team uh, while he was at Manchester United. I forgot how good we were. We dominated Ajax. They had very few chances, and the ones they did were not really clear cut. Um, so, like now, you expect the team to get back in it. You know, even let in a goal. Like it's gonna yeah, be. A I know. Fight. I was like, like I was like, over the score United, was a two one. Like they were nowhere. We nowhere. lost them off the pitch. Yeah, we did. Um, so yeah, uh, starting in the second half didn't take long for United to make an impact once again. Smalling again winning the header, the flick, and Mkhitaryan's got a six Europa League goal of the season, and Manchester United have doubled the lead, 2-0. Pretty quiet match from the Armenian until the 48th minute, um, you know, from a corner. We, we don't score enough from corners these days, but headed down by Smalling and then just kind of flicked in um, with this nice little back heel uphill whatever it was like a bicycle flight. it was like a little, uh, like a S- t- pseudo scorpion kick. yeah exactly i'm gonna say look oh we saw that scorpion kick he scored from zlatan uh earlier in the year but i mean uh he's our midfield armenian i mean a mkhitaryan we all know why he left early i mean it was basically uh <laughs> getting the piano man alexis sanchez <laughs> <laughs> Can we call him that exclusively, please? That yeah, is that is great. <laughs> that is so it's good. The music, you know. It's like, uh, <laughs> 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 look, great. Look, I'm. Hey, you know, uh, he came. Mkhitaryan came in, ended up leaving a little early, but he had this moment in this final. Played well for us, especially in Europa League. He played well. He was critical getting us there as well. So I'm going to say, great for Mickey. We get our goal, and then. Dude, we are the champions, my friends, pretty much. And you're spot on about Mickey. Um, 
you know, I think if you were going to do that transfer over again, you'd probably hold on to Mickey because it's like paying, paying, you know, Sanchez $30 million a year to score four goals. Uh, it's not exactly work with it, but this was peak Mickey. Um, so he was huge in the run up to the, to this final, uh, and comes up with another big goal because with two nil, you basically iced it with the chances that IX is getting. Um, after that, wasn't much doing until 65th minute. Another great chance from Fellaini. Uh, good chance, right? And where we expect them, right in the box, but it goes right at the keeper. 72nd minute, we bring on Lingard from Mkhitaryan. Um, and then 73rd minute, Pogba's dragged down in the box. Kind of a penalty shout, but, you know, nothing doing. So did you see this chance? Yeah, you're up by two. The referee's kind of, it has to be very obvious. You know, it's like, it, it does factor in the human uh, element, especially referees. No VAR, right? You have to remember. It's true. Uh, and, you know, we're up by two. It's like, come on, we're not giving you another. No, that makes sense. Uh, 84th minute, Martial came on for Rashford. You know, he'd not look thrilled. <laughs> he was like, he, I get six minutes. Thanks, Jose. Hey, he wears it. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. You know, if he's happy, you know, if he's sad, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, that's, de- that's definitely true. Uh, and then in the 87th minute, Lingard's got a great chance one on one with a goalie. Um, but I think he dawdles too much on it, thinks he has more time, and he gets coughed behind by Sanchez. Um, so should have scored there, you know, kept his run going of scoring because he did score in the League Cup final, didn't he? Yes, but Lingard, you know, it's uh, it's been a long ride with Lingard as well, and you know. Uh, that's all I got to say about that. It's been so. a long ride. <laughs> it's been a long ride. And the last but not <laughs> least, not... the the legend, Wayne Rooney, the all-time leading goal scorer for Manchester United, comes on for Juan Mata, standing O from all the Manchester United fans in Stockholm. And that was all she wrote. Uh, Manchester United win the Europa League final, pull off two pieces of silverware in Jose's first season. And like you said, we started the pod after this. Feelings were sky high. We're like, oh, baby, we're off to the races. No, we won this trophy. We're in your apartment. I remember it very clearly. And then we're like, yeah, we're definitely going to start a podcast. It was like, we were kind of talking about it. We're like, we talked about United. We follow them so much. Like, it's just like a waste. If just you and me yapping at each other, we should just share this yapping with the world. Uh, and it was that, that was, that was the moment we were like riding so high, sir. It was, we're just it was, selling. It great. It was That's great. basically our pod, selling our yapping to the world. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm giving it away, sir. We give it away. away. We don't sell nothing. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well said. What a great match. Uh, stats wise, possession, IX 69%, Manchester United 31%, shots on target, IX 3D, United 4 Paul Pogba scored in back-to-back games for United after a run of 19 games without one. And it was the first time he had done so at the club level since April 2016 for Juventus, sir. So Paul P in great form coming in this game. And five of Henrik Mkhitaryan's last six United goals have come in Europa League. Like I said, he was critical to get us to the final, scored in the final. Great to see him with the trophy. Uh, sad that he left a little too early. But again, he seems like an Arsenal player, a little soft. <laughs> uh, Jose Mourinho has won all four of his European finals as a manager, winning the 2003 UEFA Cup, 2004 Champions League with Porto. Everyone knows that one. 2010 Champions League with Inter Milan, and obviously 2017 with Manchester United. Clearly, you rate the Champions League a little higher than uh, UEFA or Europa Cup, sir. Yeah, I would think so. I think is UEFA UEFA is the old Europa League Cup, right? Yeah. Yep. So he's got yeah. two of each. Hey. Um, none more famous. And they pro- rename them to make it extra confusing. Yeah, you exactly. That's why sometimes I call you UEFA Cup. It's actually Europa Cup. Again, it's hard to keep my. Uh, it's hard to keep it straight. It is confusing because UEFA is the UEFA European Champions Football League. So the right. UEFA Cup, then it's UEFA Cup, UEFA Champions League Cup. So then I do agree, Europa Cup, the UEFA Europa Cup. I think technically, but who? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just surprised it's not like the Heineken Cup yet. <laughs> when are they going to start selling the names? That's next. If it was in, uh, if it was in the United States, sorry, it probably would be. It would be the uh, UEFA Heineken Cup. <laughs> it is the Tostitos <laughs> UEFA Cup. Uh, Mourinho has maintained a 100% win record against Ajax, winning all seven matches against the Dutch side. And late substitute Wayne Rooney made his fourth appearance in a major European final for Manchester United. He also played in the 2008, 2009, 2011 Champions League final, equaling the record held by Ryan Giggs. Uh, you know, I don't even need to say it. Your guy, Ryan your Giggs. favorite guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Marcus Rashford became the youngest Englishman aged 19 years and 2005 days to start a major European Cup final since Gary Mills in May 1980 for Nottingham Forest. I mean, that's huge. Sir Marcus Rashford. Um, Rashford is red. 
wearing the 19 goes from what 39 to 19 to 10 i don't like the 10 on him i like the 19 what do you think i like the 10 i think he's played some of his best football for manchester united in the 10 uh this game's kind of muted you know it was like a tiny tot rashford he's still skinny he hadn't really put on that weight like he has in the last year or two uh in terms of muscle mass didn't you know kind of got shut down a little bit by sanchez and delit a few times but uh, obviously, he's shown his his form in the last couple of seasons. What a player he is! Uh, I'm all about the ten. I love number ten. No, no, Bruno I don't used to think wear so. 10. Bruno's the ten. Bruno's a ten. Bruno's, Bruno's 10. an eight. Rashford he is a ten. Is he's number. He's true. He is, he, but he likes to wear Rashford eight. Can wear, hey, Rashford can wear seven, right? Rashford can wear seven. He no. can even make a number. San, for him Sancho's 19, getting seven. Eight, ten. Sancho's getting seven. Uh, Bruno's going to get eight when Mata retires or leaves. And I think Rashford's number ten. He's not bro. ten. He's not ten. But if you look at, he'd be an eleven almost, right? And almost he's an eleven because you play him on the exactly. left wing. Yeah, so give him eleven. Yeah, <laughs> give him Ryan yeah, Giggs' number. I, I I don't know. Like a lot of numbers switching for Rashford, so we'll see. Sir, any other comment on the uh, that game, that fateful season? I mean, we played uh, we played well in the league, sir. If you if you actually recall, we only lost five games. Wow, that year I don't remember us playing that well. Um, but we drew 15. That we was drew the whole 15. issue. Oh, uh, yeah. we, it, I do remember that. Sixth, yeah, not a right? great finish. And it was all because of those, couldn't keep those leads. But, yeah. I, uh, but I mean, that's incredible if you think about it. We only we lost five games and came, came in six. Arsenal lost nine, and they finished in fifth ahead of us. It's all about those drop points. I remember those draws. They were frustrating, and that was a, a common thing under, uh, under uh, Jose, getting used to those draws. Yep. That is, uh, but again, this is that's where fans kind of he lost the fans with the the style of play. Anything you miss about Jose Mourinho other than the the winning the trophies? I I do think the the narrative is you don't hire Mourinho if you're going to be cheap. It's like I kind of do think Mourinho had the mojo. He came in, he won, and I do think the board got a little coy with him. Uh, when he wanted to spend big again, because I I do think that we needed that defender, you no, know, to back us up like the team he want he had like Lukaku. I totally Pod, agree. You need Maguire. If you th- if you think about the teams that he was really successful at with Chelsea and even Inter, he was you know he spent some money, um, especially at Chelsea, and was given autonomy to put a team together. And I think that's why he's going to be a huge failure at Spurs, bro. Because they're so exactly. cheap. They are so cheap. Um, and they think they're going to sell Harry Kane for $200 million to like fund this transfer spree for Jose. Um, so I think he's going to be in trouble there. Because it's, it already got off to a rocky start. And if he can't hit the races early, he becomes like a sour grape. And he just becomes mean. Every press conference, throwing people under the bus. I don't miss that at all, dude. He was like such a sour apple. I'll tell you, yeah. You're, you're totally right. Um, and it's almost like the way it, the, the way you kind of need to think about it is if he comes into your club, he has to be based on it. Like Jesus, like whatever he says goes like this player needs to leave, get rid of him. He wants to buy that player. He wants to overpay for him. You got to get him. And it, it, it kind of sucks. But if you want to put together a title challenging team in two seasons, that's kind of what you need. And it doesn't, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no rhyme or reason why him and Pogba fell out. There's no rhyme or reason why he didn't like Mkhitaryan. There's no rhyme or reason why he did any of the things he did other than he's Jose Mourinho. But you got to trust Jose Mourinho. And you can't handcuff him, like you said. He's going to do terrible at Spurs for that reason. And anytime he's focused up and not down on the squad, acting like, you know, Jesus, just <laughs> bopping everyone on the head and start telling them being Jersey, like, that's when you're going to lose Jose Mourinho. And when he's focused on the board and he's focused on, hey, at Spurs, we need to sell Kane for me to do this. Right. Then he's going to be pouty-faced. You need to empower the man. That's kind of how he acts. No, that's a, top- that's a very good point. You have to almost give him the same level of authority that, that Fergie had at the end. right? Yes. He's in charge of everything. And you, if otherwise, he'll be – because he's an ego and he wants to be in control. He's a control freak. Um, LVG I, had it. They gave it to LVG. I know. I know. LVG like they got cheap. Like, got they got, remember he finished second this, the following year, and they weren't willing to splash um, for what's his, for McGuire. So like he got so pissy after that. I mean, it's just you're right. You have to give him exactly what he wants, and if you don't, he acts like a little, a little kid. Yeah, you're signing the deal with the, like, it's almost like they signed the deal with the devil, and then they didn't come through. You know, it's like if you're going to sign the deal with the devil, you got it. You got to go full. You got you got to go full in. <laughs> And I always felt like one foot in, one foot out with Mourinho is not right. That's why Ole is great because you can do the rebuild thing, kind of have a longer vision of it. But the Jose is like the win now. And if you're not, he's going to tell the fans 
But the where Jose did lose me was after we got eliminated from the Champions League and he said this club hasn't won anything in Europe anyway or something like that. Don't yeah. you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that bitter against Sevilla and he's like, well, what? You guys think you guys win in Europe anyway? You guys don't win in Europe. Like he was better than the club. And then that's kind of when I really lost it. That, that, that was a bridge too far for me for him. No, that's a good point. I remember that. <laughs> now that you say that, I remember that as well. Um, was that Sofia? Was that Sofia? No, I think it was, that, which was a bad crash out. Remember that? That was like, we shouldn't yeah. have lost that game, but we played like shit. And he put out kind of like a, a soft lineup that was just, you know, defensive. Too I'm defensive. Like better than here, you know? Yeah. Anyway, uh, sir, we're, the sentiment's high now. Always at the wheel. Um, you know, it's like a different no, you approach. Talk about the Mar- if you talk about this trophy, you got to talk about this, the Mourinho era. I mean, that's kind of. No, you yeah, do this because it was it was it was a Mourinho win. It was a Mourinho win, and a, in many ways, uh, a Mourinho team because it certainly was a Mourinho starting eleven. So, hey, we won two pieces of silverware. Shit fell apart after that. Um, he did buy a couple of solid players, and here we are today. So let's just we're the man's treble. Would you say poor you man's sold treble your soul to the devil for the for the poor man's treble, well, and it, you bought the piano man. That's all I got. Piano say. man. Oh my god! <laughs> I think that was Eddie's idea. <laughs> that was a bad idea. United in the news, jumping in. Uh, Manchester United, they actually just released uh, their Q3 financials for their fiscal year. Their fiscal year ends in June, so this is the third quarter. Obviously, they kind of do that because the season ends in the summer. That's why they kind of have their fiscal year then. Not to get too nerdy here on the pod, sir. Uh, you and me, we have a finance background dealt with public companies all the time, don't anymore. So I am able to just do a deep dive into the Manchester United financials, which I think is really interesting. I listened to the conference call as well. Ed Woodward's on it, you know, giving the hem and the han about COVID, saying that they're not going to make too much money. They're going to have to give back. I think the estimate's about 25 million TV money. They're going to lose the gates. Um, they're talking about exactly what the financial situation of the club is looking like, and that is a chance on that call. If you haven't listened to it, it's pretty boring. The most interesting part is when the – Research analysts can ask questions, and you can kind of see Woodward squirm a little bit. Didn't sound too happy, and that might be because Ed Woodward, A, just he's Oscar the Grouch, looks like Oscar Oscar the Grouch, don't like him anyway. But I think he's sweating a little bit, honestly. And you know, when I kind of looked under the hood and went through the financial standards, we owe quite a bit of money. Uh, we were contract, contractually obligated to pay out like something like 200 million pounds. I think it's because the Harry Maguire fee wasn't supposed to be paid for another year. United are banking on all this cash coming in. We only have 90 million. So when you kind of get it, we're like paying for transfers from prior years. And it's like, for some reason, it's like all due this year. Um, United are kind of in a cash crunch and you have to look at it. Cause like, you know, a year and a half ago, we had 300 million in the bank. We were flush. And then now all of a sudden we're tight on cash and COVID hits. It's kind of like they were playing a little – Woodward was banking on like a big sale this summer, probably to fund like Paul Pogba, get $100 million in, right? Yep. And then that could kind of fund the old transfers as well as kind of have the revenue coming in and then get the bump on the Champions League if we made it. And then he can go out and spend a wheel and deal. Because you have to think about it. It's all like – all these, there's a lot of moving parts, right? You, you have to assume I'm going to sell Paul Bogg for a lot of money, or you're banking on these checks and they're not coming in. So now the club's kind of screwed, sir. They're 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 in a tight, they're really in a tight financial situation. And I think they're going to need to a get more debt. And there's different mechanisms. More debt. To do, no more debt. To do oh, that. They have so much debt. <laughs> what they have 450 million pounds of debt. And the party line right now coming up from Woodward and anyone that Woodward's going to talk to in the press. Because this is the stipulation that they they repeat this party line. The reason that we're in a cash strap situation is because we bought Harry Maguire. They're like, that's the reason. That's because we spent all this money in Harry Maguire. No, it's because they've been in, they've been poorly managed cash wise. They've been sucking out dollars interest wise and dividends for years, um, and they're not in a great, great cash position to begin with. So you yeah, know, I they, they had to pay the eighty million up front. So they usually do it over installments, like you're right. But they did pay it all up at the end of the last summer, eighty million in cash to Leicester City. So I think the deal is 80 million cash, but I think it was due in a year. I think that's why there's a big um, sort of, they call it trade payables, which basically means like all the, the guaranteed fees from old transfers that you need to pay going forward. And they're all due this year. So I, I think for some reason, poor planning on this is, we're, we're getting into the weeds probably a little too much than any American Red Devils fans want to hear. But the whole idea is that Woodward is, this is what his, this is how you judge Ed Woodward. I mean, people want to say, 
is he a football genius? Does he know how to buy players? It's like, how, how does he know how to run a business? He's the, he's basically the president of Manchester United. He's responsible for these financial statements and it looks to be a mess. So I heard a little rumbling on Twitter, probably not from a legitimate source that Edward Ward is not being viewed in a good light by the board. And the, and the reason is because of the issue with the cash crunch, terrible timing. They weren't prepared for this crisis. So Edward was getting judged on the merits of, of the financial space statements for Manchester United. It does not look good. So fans, if you're reading any articles about us going out and splashing hundred million, they are completely bullshit. And what's amazing is like all these journalists, Manchester United's public company, you can go look at the financials, but all the journalists are printing this stuff anyway, even though the reality of the situation is completely different. And the questions that should be asked of the club are like, what are you going to do for cash? Yeah, especially because if I didn't realize that, I thought the McGuire money had already been paid out. So that means that that 80 million that we have cash on, on hand is all being used to pay for the McGuire payment now. And then we're going to have zero cash for transfers within the next year. Within the next year, they owe 185 million. They have 90, 90 yeah. million in cash. They owe, right. They and owe, they owe 185 like said, within the next year. Is that you said 185? Yes. Holy crap. They owe other clubs, 185 million pounds. We only have 90 million in, in cash and you have to pay back 25 for the TV rights. Yep. <laughs> and they, they lose three million a game the, for the, for match day. They lose a three million a game for not being having fans at Old Trafford. Yeah, and we're talking about next year too. So the real interesting part about this stuff, it's just kind of how are we going to operate? What is Manchester United going to look like? And, and, and right now, it, from a financial perspective, something's got to give. Now, Manchester United is worth probably three billion dollars on the open market. You know. Their stock quotes on the stock exchange are very liquid. They can get cash. It's a matter of how do they get cash, right? They can issue stock. They can raise more debt. Now, some people, Manchester United fans, we don't like the debt. They already pay probably twenty million interest a year. They pay out fifty million in dividends a year. We're talking seventy million a year going into the pockets of the players or bankers, sir. And that's not what fans want to see. So look, America Red Devils, we have a good, we have a expertise in this field. I'm going to be breaking it down a lot more into more succinct facts. But since they just came out. I'm coming through it. Really interesting stuff. And I think Ed Woodward could be fired. If he was ever to be fired, it'd be because of how he managed the club into this crisis. And it couldn't have come at a worse time for this club. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to br- break it down because what you're saying doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound like we're buying no uh, Sancho for even 80 million. No, there's no, not even cl- I mean, we'll buy I couldn't like- believe what I was seeing. No, I honestly couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's a complete mess. And, and what's insane about it is all the journalists, no one's covering it. There's no one. What two guys and a dog out in California are talking about <laughs> going through the financial statements for Manchester United and the BBC just sitting there. It's too much work. It's, too, it's better. It's, it's easier to just make up a transfer rumor and, than, than actually go comb through the financials. How much time are you going to burn on that when you can just whip up some rumor about Timo right. Werner coming to Manchester United for a hundred million <laughs> hours already. And here's the deal. It's like, cause I mean, obviously I have a background in this stuff is you got to go through every single filing from the last like two to three years because they report in a way where there's like missing links that you can only find if you add up all the parts together, right? And so you need to go through each filing. And in different filings, like some quarterly filings will actually give you a breakdown of revenue. Sometimes they won't give you a full breakdown of revenue. So then you have like holes in the model and you have to make assumptions to figure out kind of what are they doing? Because it's it's a sleight of hand game they're playing with the balance oh, yeah. sheet, what they're doing at United. And guess what, sir? America Red Devils. We're on it, baby. You know, we're on the case. We're, we're on the case. Coming, dude. We're coming with charts. I'm going to tweet them out, whatever it takes. Uh, full transparency here. This is a club we love, and there's no way that they should be in the situation they are. They should be spending $100 million on Sancho. We should be seeing uh, them make moves in the transfer market. But Ed Woodward is a complete muppet, sir. He has no idea what he's doing, and I will prove it beyond a reasonable doubt on Twitter via my review of these financials. So it's coming. It's called American on American Crime. You know, they bought this club exactly. of debt. We're going to the American. shit out American. of these guys. <laughs> they he should. The, dude, that, that's the one thing. It's like we got American owners. They hired – the wrong dude to run it. And wait, <laughs> guess what? What was the wrong? Hey, guess what? He's the wrong dude to run it on the pitch. And he's been he's probably the he's wrong been dude the wrong to run dude. it in the boardroom. He's a comp- no one likes him. He's a complete muppet. Get him out of the club. He's doing a complete shit job. Guess what? The only thing he's ever, the only thing he's been able to do is whore out the Manchester United brand, which is like probably the easiest thing in the world to do. You and me could do that. Yeah. It's like, hey, Chevrolet, you want to pay us money and put your logo on a jersey? Yes, yeah, sweet. I worked in corporate sales. I interned for corporate sales. Uh, for a prominent franchise in, in, in the United States. And I'll tell you what. Uh, NHL, NHL and NBA. And the people that work in the corporate sales office are like the dumbest people I've ever met. Because there isn't <laughs> really any job. There's, a, there's no job. You're selling Manchester United. 
Who doesn't want that? Which is easier to sell, a lot easier to sell. We're not going to demean anyone's role, but a lot easier to sell than the clubs you were selling. You know, Mitch and I are winners. <laughs> and especially, the, you know, the times he's had yeah. to be, you know, the chief executive of this club. So have him manage him well. He does get a lot of credit. Oh, he's just like genius, this financial genius that has like done all this maneuvering. That's propaganda as well, sir. Yeah, Whatever I, happened to the article about his house? What about the investigation yeah. police? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, what ever happened to that like whole vandalism investigation? The Manchester United it got real quiet. It, it went business. real quiet, didn't it? Neil Ashton, where are you at? I mean, like, our dislike for Woodward is like, and again, I'm not dispersing anyone who's in uh, sports commercial sales here, but you know what I mean. It's like the idea that it's hard to sell the brand of Manchester United to a, a billion people around the world. It's just like, and if he's done a good job at that, it's like, come on. No, his job is to protect the financial viability of this team. And make yeah. sure that they can compete on a global level and they can, that they can weather a crisis like they're going through right now. And based on the pressure that's going to be on them from the debt side and their obligations to pay out transfer fees, this window is going to be muted. It is not going to be a big spending money uh, window for sure. Not at all. And guess what? I'll also project everything out so we'll know how much money they're going to have going forward. I don't have my arms around it completely. But, and if anyone has any accounting background, what's to help me? It, it, you know, please tweet us. Please email us at AmericanRedDolls at gmail.com. Transparency is what we need for this club because it's being run by Muppets at the moment. Sir, should we get the next bit of news? Let's do it. Um, we blogged about it on the website, but Man United are keen to keep Diego Delo with a number of European clubs circling, according to the Daily Mail. Uh, 21-year-old has had an on-and-off season, an on-and-off career for United. What do you think about this, John? Do you think United should be keeping hold of Delo? I mean, like, I think we've discussed this earlier, but my position is he's a young lad, versatile, left, right, back, play winger, you know, great squad player. You got to give him time, right? You totally. got to give him time. He's young. Totally. And it, um, he's, he's gotten on with Bruno Fernandes from the jump, and that's something that, like, is not, yeah, Port is not, is not a small sir. thing. You know, actually, it's very important for chemistry. Another reason, just, like, keep Mata around. <laughs> I would just like put him into the staff because um, Mata helps with the, the morale as well. And it feels like Delo is a contributor to that, just that Latin American spark, that Iberian spark that we have at the moment um, between the Portuguese and Spanish players. So I'm all about it. And he's got upside. He's 21. He can play all over the pitch. Uh, and he might end up moving out of defense into attack. You never know. Yeah, no, I, I rate Delo to keep him around. I mean, like, you got to. We'll, we'll see. Like, I don't think we're going to be selling players. I don't think we should be selling players right now. And transfer um, fees are going to be way but down. Sir, so, right? We, so no one's paying $40 million for DeLo in this market. No. So. A uh, few kind of quick fire transfer rumors. Joshua King in the press all over. I mean, the COVID release from, from Bournemouth. And then all of a sudden, Joshua King, four of the Premier League top six, want to sign him. Obviously, we want to sign them, sir. So they're talking about a bunch of different player, different uh, EPL teams are in the race to sign Joshua King. How are you feeling about this? I heard Chelsea is in there. Not Liverpool is looking at Timo Warner. Liverpool, the, the the players Liverpool are lining up just makes me my blood boil. Oh, they're talking sir, about talk, it. They're talking Berger, about. It. They're, they're going to be affected too, right? I mean, that would someone else talking is, Havertz as well. Warner, no, they know where they're going to be able to afford both. And then now and Mbappe. Like, I heard Mbappe, bro. It's like, trust me, it's all. Sm <laughs> they're not going to be spending big money. No one's going to be spending big money. And I think a lot of clubs are going to be reluctant to sell their star players that would normally demand huge transfer fees in the in the six digits, six digits. No, in the freaking nine digits. You know, like hundred million <laughs> plus players. They're going to wait, right? Like They're not going to sell Sancho this summer. They're not going to sell him for $65 no, million know, for a cut rate deal. Joshua you know, King. Joshua King. one of the United? He seems more like the kind of players that we might be going after this summer, right? If you can get a deal with Bournemouth. Like, Come on. Now we're in the bargain. Bin. This I, we are, dude. Because look at the, look at the finances. January transfer window. Now we're in the bargain. We bin. are. He's the last day. We are. He's the last day. Sir. I know. But we 27. He's, it's like, ah, uh, Woodward, hate you. I hate Get out of the, the That's sure. why we sell, like, sack Woodward, sack, sack lasers, shirts, and stickers. Pick them up at AmericanRedDevils.com for a reason. Because, I mean, the, the, it's good that you started with the finances in the news because it basically, like, gives you context for all transfer news for this summer. It's a ruse, sir. It's it's literally a ruse. It's like, Manchester United, everyone loves it, and then the finances are public, and it's just like, it's, they make it so hard to understand. We know, we know what like, you're doing. We know what you're doing. Next bit of news. Dig in, sir. Dig in. Uh, Paul Pogba, Mina Riola, Juventus, summer move. What do you think? Is that the next bit of news? Is, is that on the... I yeah, that's now. the next bit of news. So, Lay Sport, in, this is obviously a French publication, sir. What do you make of it? 
I mean, it's a little disappointing. That was today. I, I feel like was I didn't see it, but Mino, if, it's got to be Mino, right? Still feeding news. Still feeding news. Never stops. Even though it looks like no one's going to be paying the requisite money to move Pogba. And Juventus has a salary cap limit that United's not doing. Um, that would probably price out Paul Pogba, unless he was willing well, to come. This would be after this. I mean, like, again, like, this is just Mino being Mino. That's how I see it. Yeah. Um, and also now Bayern Munich as well from the Sun could be in the race for Jaden Sancho. So, you know, I, again, could be, but um, I, I think that Bayern buys all the Dortmund players. I don't like that. Lewandowski should have come to United. Sancho should come to United. The whole like feed Bayern thing. I'm not a Bayern fan. I think they're trying to go for Sané. I thought that was the move I was hearing that, that uh, he was going to leave City and that's the player they're after. But I think the transfer money that is going to be required to move door, uh, move Sancho is going to be too much for you know because they're not going to play pay a hundred million pounds. Whereas like in a normal market we would, and that's why I don't see this transfer happening this year. I, I think Sancho will wait a year until like football regularizes, not regular like get, you know gets back more to normal and people are making the cash that they were making six months ago. I like regularizes. That's a Sorry. word. I made I like that up. That. Just, <laughs> I like that just, word. Uh, uh, having uh, an <laughs> hour in just making yeah, yeah, up yeah, words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look, when it comes to Jaden Sancho, I think you were initially right. You said, I don't think it happens this summer, but next. And again, for anyone who's like pulling their hair out, me talking about Manchester United's finances, like Manchester United can go raise 300 million in debt and go buy Sancho. Like they have the, they have the, op- the pit, they have the option to do it. I'm not saying United is poor. I'm saying United doesn't want to draw down on their 125 million revolver. They say that in their financial statements, right? So the idea that they want to go get more debt, that's not the game plan. That's not the game plan, but if they want to, they can. And Money. again, you know, the fans. I would take debt for Sancho. I mean, that kind of money. That kind of money is cheap at the moment, right? It's like they could, they could get some good finance, and I imagine interest rates are pretty low. Um, I would borrow money for Sancho. I mean, for like a generational talent, that'd be a ga- that would arguably be a game changer. That like. The Blazers could do that, and the answer is probably no. no. Nah. They're probably pissed at Woodward, being like, "How'd you screw the pooch on this one?" <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I hope he has. I hope. I, he, he he's literally he's done a really bad job managing the balance sheet of the club and he's done a bad job managing the managers and the players i think he's i think he's a complete shit show there's no vision uh he didn't even sound like friendly on the call uh, i think he's sweating it man it doesn't sound like he's like in a good spot so that makes me happy so there is one good thing that came there out you of go. No, eddie woodward might be gone no but, transfers but we might get rid of eddie I mean, that'd be the best transfer of all. Yeah, transfer out. Um, I think last bit of news. Shots fired <laughs> from Ole. We cover this on the blog as well. He said, I'd rather have a hole in the squad than an asshole. Um, I love that that quote from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer talking about, I think he was talking to the official United podcast um, that he wants, quote, you want players to have a bit of ego and edge, but they have to be able to adapt. There were things I didn't like last year, some personal agendas, which could be sorted out. Uh, couldn't be sorted out until summer. There will always be players who want to play more in football, but if a team is to be successful, then players have to be available at different times. I don't know who's shooting at, at this point, sir, but um, he did finish yeah, it off. I, I feel we don't have one bad apple in the group, is, is how he finished it. He so, also said, uh, Rick, shout out Rick the Red on Twitter. Rick the Red did a, did a whole thread on Ole's like, rant uh, after the Everton 4 0 loss. And he said, players that play today are not going to be around. And basically, like everyone who played is like still around. Really? So, like, because like Pereira came on after we were down four. Now, like, there wasn't like one player that it doesn't make any like what he said doesn't make any sense. And the only thing it could be like, he he, he comes out and says these things, but doesn't back it up. Yeah. Right. You know, we got rid of Lukaku. But Lukaku wasn't part of that game. I mean, there's a bunch of things like like that that Ole does. So I think he like he kind of says these general comments in the press, but when it comes to Paul P, he's like. Paul's training, trying to get healthy to come back and do really good for Manchester United, even though he's like playing basketball in in America, even though he's training in Dubai and taking photos with Zidane. So as far as Ole kind of talks a talk here a little bit, I just think he doesn't need to come out and say this. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't um, back it up. He doesn't I, back it up. That, that's why like this summer, if all of this, you know, horribleness didn't happen with COVID, would have been so amazing to see what Ole's intentions were with Pogba because like everyone would assume, I mean, at least the two of us on this pod would assume that like normal circumstances, Pogba was getting traded. No doubt. 
Like I was 100% certain that they were going to get rid of Paul Pogba this summer if it was a normal transfer market. Now it doesn't look like it was happening. Uh, and it feels like this is the kind of thing you talk about, maybe in regards to Pogba, but maybe some of that left. Maybe it's Sanchez's comment. Um, probably not Smalling. Probably not, not actually gonna, Young, right? People, like, some people said it was about Sanchez. I was like, but Sanchez doesn't play for us anymore. He's still on the you books. I mean, it, he's, coming. No, he's on the books, but he's had Inter. So you think Ole's talking shit to Sanchez at Inter Milan right now? It's like, that doesn't make any sense. I, I'm just saying, like, I think there are a few players like Lingard, probably yeah. Pogba. Basically, he, he had a lot of antics. But the reason why Ole's so good is he just kind of, he's only Mr. Nice Guy. It doesn't matter. It's all good. He doesn't go one-on-one with Pogba like Mourinho did. Uh, everything's okay, you know, and then like I think eventually like the playing the momentum of the team will overtake any of the personal BS between the manager and the players. I don't think this is always game. That's why I think these statements are a little out of character. You know, it's like what you want to hear him say, but he, he doesn't back it up. I mean, clearly, you know, the whole Everton 4 nil look look to Richter Red's Twitter. He made a really good point. I actually went through it all read it all and I was like surprised. You're like, yeah, who is he calling out? It doesn't make sense. He does the call out to Almost for itself. There's no actual like players behind it. Uh, I'd be I'd be interested to see that thread. I'd be interested to see who started that day and who's not. Who's on the way out? Jesse Lingard. Did he start that day? It could be 4D chess, sir. Always playing 4D chess. We're we're all playing checkers. I, I mean, only I. That's what the thing is. Like I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not uh, giving only a cheap shot here. I'm saying he's doing a great job. Right. I just don't, if you try to actually add up, like, who's he talking about? Maybe that, but that's what good managers do, bro. They just provide cover and say the right things that sound good. That sounds freaking good. I'd rather have a hole than an a hole. Like, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, you're like, who's the a hole? You know? Yeah. And then you start thinking about who the, maybe it's like, maybe it is 4D yeah. chess and we're all getting played. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, we're here yapping about it. It's like, it only, only wins at the end of the day. But I would tell you, look, he's doing a great job. Gotta get European football. And guess what? We got to get top four. So let's leave it at that. It's been an amazing pod. Thanks to everyone who downloads, supports this podcast. Just two Manchester United friends on the couch, sir. We used to be sitting next to each other in the bunker, and now we do it via Skype. So thank you for putting up the audio uh, quality. Uh, I know that I'm remote. But again, if you want to support the podcast, you can do that in multiple ways. AmericanRedDevils.com. Click on store. We have a bunch of merch, hashtag, sack, word, stickers, everything. We're getting you more uh, information on the financials of Manchester United in the upcoming days and weeks as I go through everything. Sir, you're in an amazing uh, blog. How about you tell everyone about it? Absolutely. We got a, a bunch of great fan contributors that have been, been doing a terrific job. Um, check it out at AmericanRedDoubles.com. And we also have D- Dirty Donnie coming in with some, some great wag posts uh, as well. Appreciate everybody who's been checking out the blog, checking out everything that we've been posting. Um, and it's been terrific, sir. This is, you know, it's only going to get better once football returns. No, absolutely. Uh, absolutely love this club. Can't wait for them to come back. Can't wait for football to be back. It's going to be awesome. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's what we need. It's been too, way too long. Way too long. It's been way too long, and I miss it so. It's, uh, it's going to be weird, you know, with no fans in the, in the stadiums. It's certainly been weird watching the Bundesliga games, but it'd be better than nothing. So much to play for. That's why I'm excited. Absolutely. How about you give us our top downloads the last seven days? Whole list. Top to bottom. Whole list. Top to bottom. <laughs> you got it, sir. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Brooklyn, New York. Number two, baden Pennsylvania, number three, Mandelville, Louisiana, uh, number four, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. How you doing? Number five, San Diego, California. Number six, Longview, Texas. Number seven, Florence, South Carolina. Number eight, San Francisco, California. Number nine, Charlotte, North Carolina. What a mix. Nice mix of freedom. And last but not least, uh, Stavanger, Norway. We appreciate all the downloads. Appreciate all the support across the states and across the world. Um, football getting back to business hopefully sooner rather than later big week as you said for the future of the premier league wednesday's gonna be telling about where this second phase vote full contact training lads will be back at it studs will be up can't wait i mean manchester united versus Tottenham first game back brother i mean first game and it's gonna be the first premier league we got jose it's gonna be the troll Mourinho on the sideline Ole, he did him dirty last time. He rubbed his head. I know, sir, amazing. Top of his head. You remember that? He's got a little troll. He's a win. He's got just enough troll, Ole. You know, he's like because he's a winner. I, he has it. Yeah, he's a winner, dude. He's got it. Yeah, that's why the Ole Mister Nice Guy. You know, it's like it, Manchester United will be back, and I can't wait fighting for top four. It's all to play for, sir. Lots to celebrate, sir. Eleven games. How does it feel? Eleven games on the trot. Ole's at the wheel. Oh,